Adobe Fresco's had a bunch of pretty big updates recently, and it seems like they sort of slid underneath the radar, which is, I guess, usually the case with Adobe Fresco stuff. I thought in this video, I would walk you through some of those bigger updates involving brushes, user interface, some AI protection things, and then some other smaller stuff that I thought was worth talking about. The first one is a pretty small one, but I think it's significant. It certainly makes things easier for me. And that's in regard to the brush favorites folder. You can now move them around and put them in any order you want. Seems like a silly thing, but uh, it really makes things a little bit more convenient. You can also do multiple things at once. I didn't really understand how it worked. Like I saw that it was an option and I kept trying to do it and it wouldn't work. Turns out you gotta use two fingers for it. That's what she said. <laughs> Basically, you just grab one that you're gonna move, and then while you're holding it, you can just use your other finger, any of your other fingers, you could use a toe, you could use your nose, and then just tap the other ones you wanna select, and then you can move that whole group wherever you want it to go. I like to group things in the way I'd use them, like my favorite lining brushes, or like different textures. I have some half tones in here that I use on a regular basis, so I have those grouped together. It's all just where I want it to be, easy to access. And a couple other things about brushes that aren't new, but I've, I've noticed that a lot of people don't actually know because they will sometimes say, oh, I want to use Fresco, but there's nowhere near as many brushes as Procreate. And that is a crazy statement because Fresco uses Photoshop brushes and there is endless Photoshop brushes. There's been custom brushes made for Photoshop since uh, the 1800s with the dinosaurs actually used Photoshop to do those cave paintings. Any Photoshop brush, you can bring it right into Fresco. It's super easy. When you're in the brush menu, you can just go to add brushes and then you can find them where you're, wherever you have them saved. You also have access to all of those brushes that used to be part of the premium thing when Fresco was a paid app. And that's another semi-recent update. If you don't know about that, Fresco is completely free now. There's no separate paid version. It's just a fully free app. So try it out if you if you want. If you don't want to try it out, it's fine. I'm not trying to convince you to use it. I'm just saying it's free and it's good. All right, let's move on to the next category. All right, the next update is in regard to content credentials and AI stuff. Oh boy, they're gonna be so mad. I know, but what am I supposed to say? I don't know. Maybe don't be an Adobe shill. Ever thought about that? I'm not. Before we get into this stuff, I feel like I should preemptively say some stuff to just get in front of the comments and uh, questions. First and foremost, this video is not sponsored by Adobe. I would be required by YouTube and Adobe to specify that. They, they both would require me to state that. There's no reason for me to lie about that kind of thing. I have done sponsored content for Adobe in the past, but that doesn't tie me to them forever. For example, I have done illustration work for McDonald's and I can tell you that I don't like McDonald's food and I don't eat it. Just because I did work for them in the past doesn't mean that I am owned by that company. That said, I am an Adobe community expert, but that doesn't come with any monetary benefits. I get access to some early stuff and some, some minimal perks, but certainly nothing that I would put my integrity on the line for. If there was another app out there that worked better for me and that I preferred using, I would go and use that. The second thing I have to address, just because there's gonna be a ton of comments about it, and I wish Adobe did a better job on their end so that I didn't have to answer these questions, but is about the misinformation around how Adobe, how it feeds its generative AI situation. A lot of people are absolutely convinced that Adobe steals whatever you put on there. They own everything that you make in Adobe software, and that's not the case. I guess we should quickly talk about why this misinformation is out there and why people believe this, because there are valid concerns. Number one, apparently I am making numbered lists in this video. Number two, it's, I know it's not really number two. Fine, fine. Number one, Adobe rolled out their AI stuff and was super vague about it at a time when other tech giants were actually stealing people's content for their AI models. So obviously artists were on edge. So I guess we should just go over the facts on Adobe's AI stuff. Adobe's generative AI is called Firefly, and it is trained on Adobe stock and then public domain stuff, which is basically just stuff that doesn't have a copyright. It's usually really old stuff that's the copyright is expired on. It's just stuff that is open for public use, sort of like uh, Creative Commons, if you will. So in reality, Adobe has been following sort of like the best practices for this kind of thing, but they absolutely didn't do the work or the outreach to make sure that was clear to, to people. 
There was also that content analysis setting that was written in like legal lawyer level 13 as opposed to common language human writing, words for people who, who can read stuff, normal normal language stuff. This is for like automated features like object recognition or font suggestion, stuff for like syncing your files across your different devices, tracking errors, spell check, just stuff like that. Instead of just saying something like that, they went with something wildly vague. This is what it says. You grant Adobe a license to use your content for operating and improving its products and services. That's very vague. People got worried, especially in this time of tech giants stealing everything. It's understandable. But if you dig into this stuff, Adobe explicitly states that they don't use customer content for generative AI training. It goes further saying like, your personal content like PSDs, AI files, or any Creative Cloud uploads are all safe. And honestly, if this weren't the case, do you think giants in the entertainment industry would be using Adobe software when they rely so heavily on their intellectual proper property? They, they couldn't do it. it would, the whole thing would fall apart. Okay, so back to Fresco. Fresco doesn't incorporate any sort of generative AI into the app. And I've been told it's gonna stay that way as just like a pure drawing, painting, and motion creative outlet app machine make stuff. That said, Adobe is huge and the Fresco team is tiny. I'm not naive. I know that things could change. I'm not putting all of my faith into this giant corporation. Giant corporations are ruled by a bunch of people trying to make their shareholders happy. But a giant corporation like Adobe has all these like little sub things that work on these apps. And the Adobe Fresco team is amazing. They're great. And it's very separate from that whole monolithic situation. They're just concerned with making Fresco as good as it can be. Not saying there's overarching powers, but besides the point. As much as I'd love for generative AI to just go away completely, uh, it's not going to happen. So this is the world that we have to live in. That was a wild tangent. The whole point of that was just to talk about this new feature in Fresco that allows you to attach metadata to your images that state that it was not created with generative AI. Metadata is just like information that's baked into the file that has your information and stuff like that. So it's, you know, obviously people can ignore that kind of thing, but it is something that authenticates it as your original thing, which could be important because when someone's hiring an illustrator to do work, they wanna be sure that they're not getting something that was just created with generative AI, especially when a lot of the other generative AI image makers are stealing content, so there could be copyright issues. Adobe Fresco now allows you to confirm that your work was not created with any generative AI and is all original work. So that's pretty cool. So how does this work? Well, in Fresco, you just make your work the same way you normally would. When you export your piece in that dialog box, you can turn on content credentials. And if no AI tools were used, which if you're doing it in Adobe Fresco, there are no AI tools. It will allow you to include a created without generative AI tag in the file metadata. That metadata tag within the file will follow it wherever it goes. It's embedded into the actual image. So whether that's on social media or someone else's download folder, your information is in that metadata. The one issue I do have with this for my own work is that I'm often bringing in stuff into Fresco, whether it's like a sketch or some reference images. And when you import an image into your file, Adobe Fresco can't authenticate that that image didn't come from something AI related. At least now it can't do that. So it won't be able to confirm that it was made without AI. So that is a little bit annoying. But if you're not someone who brings stuff into Fresco and just works in there, it won't be a problem at all. I'm hoping in the future they figure out a way to get around that because, you know, it's a little bit annoying. All right, next up, let's talk about elements. Elements are pre-curated stock assets integrated into Fresco. They are free to use and have been carefully selected to ensure visual quality and ease of use. The library includes a variety of visual styles such as gradient, comic, and more. You can select an asset, it downloads to your canvas and opens in transform mode, allowing you to scale, rotate, reposition as needed. So there's a lot of cool stuff in here. There's some really good textures. There's some good paper if you want to get like a paper look on there. Glitches and grit things and metallic 
things. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff in there. There's like comic grids. I don't know how useful that is. Could be a good starting point for someone making comics, but I really like using the textures in here. I played around using the glitch ones to like add as an overlay on a frame by frame animation to give sort of like a cool destroyed video look and uh, it turned out pretty cool. It's nice to have this stuff built right into Fresco so you don't have to like go and like source this stuff. And they're actually good quality. It's not easy to get a nice paper texture overlay without having to go and like buy it from some sort of like creative market or something like that. So there, there's some good options in here and you could play around with these and use them in different ways. Like you could you could use the, the different layer effects that it's like a multiply or an overlay and it'll dramatically change the way things look. They're a lot of fun to play around with. I had a lot of fun playing around with them. I think you will too. One other cool thing about the element is it gets around the issue that I mentioned with tagging something as not created with AI thing. Like if you import an image or like a paper texture that you had, for us can't confirm that that was not created with AI, so you wouldn't be able to use that tag. But anything with the elements gets around that because they're validated by Adobe. So that's, that's something, right? All right, what's next? Another new update, which uh, is pretty helpful. I was thinking it was a whatever element, but to be honest, it, it's pretty good. This is just built-in document presets for social media sizes. I don't know about you, but as someone with ADHD, I have a really hard time with numbers and I can never remember aspect ratios or sizes. So having that as like a default setting uh, is pretty helpful when you're creating something to be used on social media. So that's a quick and easy thing. It's, it's not groundbreaking, by by any means, but it is an update. Another one which I was excited about, and I still am a little bit, but it does have a downside. This is with the animation. I've been wanting colored onion skin for a while so that you can easier tell the difference between previous and next frames. The problem is the way these work, if you're doing something that's filled in, it like makes it all a solid shape so you can't see the line work in between. That's not ideal. I'm hoping that they can fix that and if there's a way around it. It's a little bit tricky unless you're just working with line work. When you're working with just line work, it's it's great. You know, if you're doing something where you can have your color fill on a, on a different layer, that gets around this issue, but it is something to consider. But having different colors between previous and next, especially if you're doing something where it's like a more for you're trying to track movement, it's it's great. It's a, it's a nice feature that I've been wanting for a while. It's something that's uh, that Procreate has had for as long as it's had motion, I believe. So listen, I don't hate Procreate. I think Procreate is great. Okay, stop trying to say that I hate it. <laughs> Ugh, it's not a, it's not a this or that world. I mean, that's how we act, but like, there's a lot of gray area. The other one is not that new, but I've noticed that a lot of people don't know about it, and that's the motion presets. I've talked about this in another video, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail here, but it is a new feature, and a lot of people don't know about it. There's just little, uh, really good presets right in there. You got a little jitter, you got a bob, you got a sway, you got something spinning, if you wanted to have a wheel spin, if you wanna have a little thing bounce around, all kinds of stuff, very easy to use. They're just built right in, and you can customize them too. Like you can change the speed or the angles of rotation and stuff like that. So a lot of fun stuff. There was some concern that I saw in the comments when I made the video talking about how Fresco had become completely free a while back, and they're like, oh, well, that just means that they're gonna abandon it. But that's not the case. The Adobe becoming free was actually because of its like five year anniversary and they were just like, you know, honestly, I think they were probably trying to do something that had a little bit of goodwill maybe because there was so much bad press with their botched AI launch. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but Adobe Fresco is being updated. It seems like there's new updates every month. There's a lot of new stuff coming. I'm one of the beta testers, so I see that there's like new updates coming all the time. So they're definitely working on it. One thing that you should know is that when you go into, uh, on the Fresco homepage, there's like that spot where it's like new features. There's a thing where you can suggest features that you're looking for. I don't think people use that enough. And I think they think that because Adobe's such a big company that who is ever gonna see it. But I've said this in this video and other times, like the Adobe Fresco team is really small. So if you have things that you wanna see in Fresco, put them in there. Someone's gonna see it, they're gonna read it. If it's a good idea, there's a solid chance it could happen. And the more of you ask for certain things, the more likely it's gonna happen. So put some, Put some requests in there. All right, good talk. If you made it this far and you're like, oh, this is pretty interesting about Adobe Fresco. I don't know that much about it. I'm gonna link to this playlist here that has a ton of different tutorials that will get you on the road to uh, being a Fresco fi uh, f 
fantastic fresco f f user, right? Right? I'm not a shell. Just trying to help, right? I mean, what? Ugh.